Phil Bekunda from Bekunda Recovery Homes and Peter Ntango, who is a recovering addict. Peter, do you remember some of your worst days and what they look oh. like? I would go like on a all night spree, like a weekend spree of drinking, drug abuse. And, you know, I would wake up, I don't know where I am. Like, I know I'm at a friend's place. I don't know how I got, like, blackouts. I used to have a lot of that. I didn't really like that because I like remembering what I do. Then I would ask my friends who I was out with, and they're like, you know, you did this, that, you fought with this, that, you argued with this, you met, you like, you. You act so stupid and childish. I'm like, is it? They're like, no, it's like you have two sides. I, like, you understand? Like, they'll, they'll be telling me, do you have like split personality disorder? Are you bipolar? I'm like, no. But yeah, so really, I don't like that side of me. Did you, um, did your parents ever try to sit down and say, you know, how can we help? Or what was the reaction from your family and that? Was that what pushed you to actually go and look for help? But your reaction from your family, first of all. Uh, for the longest time, I was living in denial. So, but I realized because I'd always sit with my mom and dad and my siblings, and I'd be like, you know, I'd always apologize every time I act a fool or I act up or I act aggressive. I'd always apologize. Sorry, this is not me. I would like sort of blame my addiction. It was sort of like an excuse, like, no, you know me when I'm sober, I'm not like this. It's, the, it's when I'm under the influence and they're like, no, it's still you. Whether you're under the influence or you're not, it's still you and you should work on yourself. It's not about your addiction, it's about personal growth. It's about realization that you know what, you can't live like this. This is going to end up bad for you in the long run. So it's better you work on this now Better now than later. So yeah, I realized that and that's what I did. Was that what pushed you to actually go and seek help? Yes. So where did you find Bill? I found Bill at Safe Places. Okay. Uh, and... it's, a, it's, a, it's a rehab in Chambogo. Bill, um, can you paint a picture for just how bad it gets for an addict? Um, just so that, I mean, it's important that even as we speak about these th things, we're able to tell people just how bad it can get so that young people who are watching actually know what they're getting themselves into if they're thinking or even have already tried this. Yeah. You see, um, unfortunately, a young person hasn't reached the point where they can actually see a problem with it. Why? Their brains are still developing. They are closer to uh, instant gratification than, you know, making judgment for what will happen. They don't really take in consideration of consequences. They are looked after, they are paid for, they are run after, they are given whatever they, they, need, they, they need. They have no responsibility. So it is difficult, even when we go for prevention, why, why, why you'd widely read that scare tactics don't work, when you go and tell them it does this, it does this, it does this, it won't help them because they haven't reached there yet. You have to show them what is relevant to them. For instance, if you do drugs, you'll be expelled. You can catch a disease. You can be knocked down by a car. You can, you see what I'm saying? You will be exp you, you can fail to, to pass your exams. This is what the drug does to your brain. And then the, the, child, the young person will get it. And, and the, oh, that's, why, that's what we call age appropriate uh, uh, education or something. But Pierre has just said uh, something here, and I like to emphasize it, that it is not the drug, it is the behavior. If it was the drug, then would not have people drinking. For instance, it is what the drug does to the person. So why are they called psychoactive substances? They change the mental state of the brain. They change it. It becomes different. If you had control, what happens? You lose it. The one who doesn't develop an addiction, when they drink, they will not lose control they will gain control. 
some of the users says uh, they're going to drink smoke recreationally and he'll say i'm going to take three pools and that's enough for me or when they are smoking when they, they feel a certain effect they be like that's enough i'm not going further what is that i have gained control the other one the addict loses control such that if they wanted to take one stick they'll take two three four okay it develops you know so there is it is about the behavior what does it do to you how does it change you yeah. the drug itself has got a purpose even heroin and cocaine they are medicinal but they are packaged for recreation so is pethadine which is packaged for uh for as a, i mean pethadine tramadol all these painkillers morphine but they can also be abused alcohol is supposed to be a relief you know it helps with cough and you know it can be a relief to the brain but if it makes you lose control then you're supposed not to use it it's like having an allergy you are supposed to explain to a doctor that i do i respond negatively to this drug and therefore it's not administered to you you see what i'm saying so the yeah. psychoactive substance supposed it is a good thing it's not the drug it is you the person and it's not a moral problem because you the person is not the problem it is just that it does things to you he said um that he used to explain to people that when i'm high you see i did it because i'm high but when i'm sober i'm not like that which is true it has changed your mental uh, your mental state okay so we have to understand these things although some people just take advantage of it when you say it's not the drug it's the behavior and then they make it a moral problem bill how how quickly does it become does it grow from day one of just trying to then becoming your lifestyle well there are certain standards that are put but really it depends on the person what we know is that the stronger the drug uh, the kind of effect it has uh has got something to do with uh, how fast how fast you develop a problem some drugs have uh, are more addictive than others yes okay. alcohol takes the longest to become an addiction yeah they would say the alcohol takes the longest because it's more behavioral it is accepted and even by the time it's manifested it's really at another level then there are drugs like heroin within the first three months of use there is already a noticeable change it creates a dependency faster than uh, than alcohol it takes depending on the drug depending on the person because there is a genetic predisposition uh, and the way they respond to the drug if it gives you euphoria you'll want to use it again the more you need it the more you're getting yourself to need it so there are all these different things and that is why when it comes to recovery we start with an assessment and say okay where did it start what was he using why was he using it are there family problems and blah 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 and then we continue from there then we shall know how to deal with it how how expensive is an addiction peter how much uh, in terms of your pocket change uh, your allowance at age 14 if you had one how much were you spending uh, on a daily on this i more than i ever earned actually if i was earning that time so really i would spend quite a lot on using drugs and i never got i never benefited from it at all actually i have made more losses because I, i weighed that liver scale of the pros and cons like what have i earned from using and have it and anything apart from losing reputation self esteem trust and all that so really it's really it's a very 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 it, it hits in all angles the losses did you was this all the, the money that you lost at that point was that money from your pocket was it did you ever find course, yourself having to take from people oh, no i you know i became you know addicts are very manipulative so i would come up with so many excuses why i need money especially on the weekend to to even stay to steal and all that you know losing trust so it really i really lowered my standards as someone yeah, yeah. 
you keep speaking about losing your reputation. I want to understand, um, and the more you speak about it, I actually realize it's a really huge um, thing in terms of your reputation to your family. Was this also to yes. your friends in different schools? Do you want to talk about that? Uh, not really, like, my friends, not really, because we're all on the same boat that time. Some have changed, like me, some are still on that dark path. Some, yeah, some had, like, realization and changed their lives completely. Others are worse than ever. So, you know, the different parts in life. So reputation, really, it's, it affected me personally with my family and relatives. My friends, not really. But it really, what hurt me the most is actually my mom. Her losing trust in me and all that. So it really hurt me the most. Okay. Bill, do, do you want to speak to the how expensive addiction can be, expense to your health, expense to your pocket, expense to your mental state? Um, what is somebody actually losing in addiction? Um, we say when a person gets an addiction, they lose everything. It is the most expensive habit, not necessarily because of the financial implications, but because of the implications it has on everybody and everything around you. It will affect your job, it will affect your workmates if you're working, because instead of, and the company at large, for instance, if I work for NTV and I'm always on hangover, and then there's a friend of mine who is always taking up my job, you're costing the company money. That is why you should tell your bosses to call me and I, and I <laughs> educate them. <laughs> Workplace productive. I'm creating a job for myself. Anyway, so <laughs> it, affects, uh, it affects the company. It will affect your workmate who has to take on two jobs to protect you. It will affect your neighbors. For instance, if you give them sleepless nights, you come blaring music, you're drunk, shouting, fighting with your friends or your spouse because of your eye. They can't sleep. They get disturbed. They're traumatized. They go to work and then they take all that frustration and finish it on somebody else. Basically, we are saying that your mental health is affected. You are tired, you are weak, you are sick, you are angry, you get depression, anxiety. No, you don't get all of them, okay, but different people develop different, uh, uh, different actions because of, uh, because of what they are being exposed to. It is expensive also financially because I mean, how much are you going to spend? You have to, that money is, could have been used for something else. If you're taking hard drugs, hard illicit drugs, like, like heroin, like cocaine, they're very expensive. We have had people talking about uh, a hit going for 100,000, for 500,000, and that's just to get high. We have had of some weed that goes for 50K for a stick, you know, and then you see what I'm saying? It is expensive to your life, to your health. You know, we say, how many people, malaria, people don't like talking about malaria, how many people sleep under the mosquito net when they are high? You know, you, are, you allow the parasite to come, you go to hospital. How many people use a condom, for instance? Uh, how many people let their guard down when they are drinking? Yeah, that is, now you're going to go on ARVs. We know they are not, they are, they are free per se in Uganda, but we don't know about that in some places. So it is actually a very, very expensive habit and it shouldn't, yeah. I mean, and it shouldn't be ignored. Unfortunately, it is the most ignored. And thus, I, I would like to thank you, by the way, right now for always trying to uh, bring up these issues in most of your programs. But it is extremely expensive and everybody is affected. Just like a cigarette, secondhand smoke. You smoke, the person okay. next to you gets it. Now, I have a problem and it affects even my CEO. All right. Um, thank you, Bill. And thank you, Peter. Let's take another short break and we'll be right back. NTV, turning on your world. Tonight, NRM calls on winners and losers in the recently concluded party center executive committee elections to set aside their differences and work for the unity of the party. As the number of recorded COVID-19 cases continue to rise, concerns about the country's capacity to handle large numbers of critical cases emerge.
Also on NTV Weekend Edition, the private sector players are advised to adhere to the health standard operating procedures or risk bearing the brunt of another lockdown. And Health Focus looks at the importance of physical medicine and rehabilitation. with 3GB MTN data automatically every month for three months and a 100% bonus on every data bundle purchased. All you do is place your MTN SIM card in SIM1. Get yours today from any Techno outlet or MTN service center near you. Techno, in partnership with... I'm going to go to Mombasa and I'm going to go to Korea Sudan. I'm going to go to Sudan. I'm going Sudan. I'm going to go to 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 Sudan. I'm going to distance <laughs> Tap into the convenience of APSA contactless cards. Another innovation that's turning banking on its head. Now you can make fast, easy and safe contactless payments for everyday items. That's African Assety. That's APSA.